Hello, this is Kathy with your perfect cat. And today I am going to talk about some holiday safety tips for your cat. Uh, we're going to talk about um, trees and decorations and also um, holiday plants. You know, those things that uh, we commonly bring into our house or around our house uh, at about this time of year. So first up is the tree. And it has um, several uh, hazards, which would be the lights, particularly if you have string lights, uh, anything where it goes into, you know, has an electrical cord. Uh, ornaments, particularly glass ornaments. Uh, needles, and in this case, that means real tree needles, like pine needles, and we're gonna discuss pine trees in, in the plants, and even plastic. And also there's the possibility of your cat climbing the tree and tipping it over. Now, um, as far as lights go, you know, the cats can get tangled up in them, or you might have a cat that likes to chew on wires. Uh, so that is um, a big hazard for your cat. Uh, breakable ornaments, of course, can, you know, your cat can get cut. Um, and of course it destroys your ornaments and it can be very heartbreaking if they're favorite ornaments that your cat has just destroyed. Uh, like it said about needles, um, plastic ones, my cats um, have often eaten plastic, the plastic needles off of um, artificial trees and then they throw those up. Um, so that's just an unpleasant thing that tends to happen. And then, um, of course, if your cat tends to climb the tree and it tips over, it can certainly hurt or injure the cat. And of course, potentially break some very precious ornaments. So when it comes to um, a tree, what I did in the past is, you know, I, when I had cats, I kind of insisted to put up the Christmas tree. I really wanted to have it up. And I always had an artificial tree uh, with the cats around. I didn't have any glass ornaments on it. And then I removed ornaments from about the lower two rows of branches. And what happened? Well, the cat still knocked over um, ornaments. Every morning I would find new ones on the floor. Uh, I was lucky because they didn't actually climb the tree and ever knock it over. But it, I think that was just, my cats just were uncertain about being able to do that. And one of the things you can do to help keep a tree from tipping over if you really want to have a tree is um, tie it, you know, somehow secure it to the ceiling, basically. Now it does make the tree a little bit less attractive, but it will protect your tree, most of your ornaments and your cat. Now, since that didn't work very well, the artificial tree with ornaments, then after a few years, I found an artificial tree with fiber optic lights. I thought this would be really great. There's no strings, you know, there's just one string from the tree um, to the electrical outlet. And then I didn't put on any ornaments. Now, what happened this time? Of course, I still had a cat that liked to eat plastic and ate the plastic um, needles off of the tree and uh, threw them up. So then I finally stopped putting up a tree and that might not be something that you want to do, but it is something that I chose to do and have not put up a tree for probably a good 10 years now. Um, and instead I do put up decorations around the house. Like I'll decorate with garland. Of course it's out of reach from, for the cat mostly. Uh, I do avoid little dangly ornaments, anything that kind of interests the cat. And there's a lot of things that interest cats. It's really surprising. Uh, if you like to put up little ornaments, you know, if you don't mind your cat playing with them, are the soft stuffed ornaments. Now my cats will take them down from wherever they're hanging, but they can't get hurt by them. And then also around the house, I'll decorate with wreaths and try to keep those out of the reach of uh, the cat. Now this year, I'm not sure that I will because my Bengal cat likes to stretch himself from the top of a table or the top of the TV console all the way up the wall or uh, in, up the television set, depending on where he's at. 
All right, now on to plants. Now these are serious hazards for your cats. And uh, before I get into the various plants, I wanna let you know that I got this information from PetMD.com. Uh, I am gonna put some of these uh, phone numbers and websites in the description. So one of the things is if your animal, if your pet, whether you might have dogs too, but your cat, um, does ingest something that they're not supposed to, you can always call the ASPCA Animal Poison Control, and their number is 1-888-426-4435. And again, that will be in the description. You can call your vet. Now, since it is the holidays, your vet might be closed and probably will be closed. There are some online vet veterinarians available 24-7 and um, these two websites that i found will be um, in the description as well one is www.justanswer.com poison control and the other one is www.pearl.com now on to the plants i have three of the most common holiday plants pictured here you see a poinsettia you see mistletoe and holly and amaryllis now the problem with the poinsettia is it tends to cause nausea and vomiting now the good thing is is that your cat is unlikely to eat enough to actually have a severe reaction because they vomit before it gets that far and it the best thing to do is just to not have them indoors or outdoors, particularly if you have outdoor cats or if you have cats in the neighborhood. Um, you know, unfortunately, just don't have them around. You can have artificial ones. Uh, I will say that your cat is probably likely to chew on the artificial ones too, but they won't get sick. Okay, now for mistletoe and holly. This one's a bit more of a problem for cats. Now, most of the time it's attached to the ceiling um, at, in an entryway, but if it falls down or if pieces of it fall down to the floor, it can cause um, severe problems for your cats. So mistletoe and holly cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and drooling. They can also cause breathing problems and it, they, it lowers the blood pressure of the cat. And so in this case, if your cat ingests a mistletoe, you must call your vet. Um, the best solution for mistletoe and holly is do not have it in your house. Now for amaryllis, these are really beautiful. People love to buy these and give these as gifts. You know, it comes in a pot with bulb and then, you know, the amaryllis grows and they grow pretty quickly. Um, but they are a danger to a cat. Now all parts of the amaryllis are going to be poisonous, including the bulb. And amaryllis causes vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy and tremors and in this case if your cat ingests any part of an amaryllis you should call your vet and i would recommend that you don't have them in your house and you shouldn't have them outside if cats can get to them so if you have your own cats go outside or if you have neighborhood cats uh, don't have amaryllis in your yard now what i don't have pictured here and had pictured earlier was the pine tree Pine trees can cause some really serious problems for your cat. Um, if they ingest a little, it'll, it'll induce vomiting, maybe some drooling, but pine needles can obstruct any part of your airway or digestive system, and they can also puncture their intestines or um, esophagus. Uh, pine trees can also cause uh, liver damage and even death. So if your cat comes to, you know, and eats pieces of pine or pine tree, you must call your vet or call poison control immediately. Um, my recommendation is do not have pine tree. And I know that that is for some people, um, it's not very Christmassy if they don't have a pine tree and that smell of pine. Um, I guess, you know, back to you either don't have a Christmas tree and you have cats, if you have cats or if you, really must have a tree. You've got to keep it out of the way. I don't care whether it's artificial or a real tree out of the cats where the cats can get to it. And, um, you know, if you like the smell of pine, I would imagine, you know, 
some essential oils, droplets, you know, get a diffuser type thing. Uh, again, if you do use any kind of like essential oil from a pine tree, that also is going to be poisonous to a cat. So you will want to keep your cat away from that as well. Now, lastly, some other plants that happen to be um, common for the holidays. They aren't really common here in the U.S. as far as I know, but um, these are two flowering plants that tend to flower not long after um, Christmas. It tends to be around February out here where I'm at. And that's lilies and daffodils. And people do love to give, you know, they bring flowers and give them as gifts. Now, all parts of lilies and daffodils are toxic to cats, including the bulbs. And I can tell you from experience that the cats love the bulbs. I have received bulbs in the mail for various lilies and things like that. And the cats go nuts for the bags of bulbs and want to eat them. So you've really got to keep those away from the cats. Um, these can cause severe problems. So kidney failure, heart arrhythmia, and gastrointestinal problems. And if your cat eats any li lily or daffodil, you're going to want to call the, your vet or poison control. And my recommendation is just not have them in the house if you have cats or outside if you have cats that can get to them or if you're, you know, trying to protect your outdoor cats as well. So those are my recommendations for keeping your cat safe from the main things that can cause your cat a serious problem and have a serious impact on your finances as well because any vet visit for any of these things is not going to be uh, cheap. Okay, so whatever you do, and uh, I hope you have a safe and merry Catmas and have safe holidays and keep your cats um, as healthy as possible. And thank you for watching. And please feel free to comment. Uh, please subscribe and um, like this video. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, uh, comment, and subscribe.